Uh, so I will now move to matters of urgency. So we're moving to the urgency motion um, from Senator Dunham. So the president has, also, has received the following letter from Senator Dunham. Dear President, pursuant to Standing Order 75, I give notice that today I propose to move that in the opinion of the Senate the following is a matter of urgency. The Victorian Labor government's decision to end native timber harvesting in January 2024 is a devastating betrayal of timber workers and communities, will cause multiple economic and social problems for Australia and needs to be met with an immediate and comprehensive policy response from the federal Labor government. So is the proposal supported? Thank you. It is, it is supported. With the concurrence uh, of the Senate, the clerks will set the clock in line with informal arrangements. And I don't have a speaker's list, so I'm calling you, Senator Dunian, am I? Thank you, you are indeed, President, and I'm delighted to have five minutes for uh, the— uh, and I move the motion. Yes. I Thank appreciate you. the guidance from the clerks. <laughs> it is a very important motion. And, um, there's lots happening in the chamber today, of course, but it is an important item of discussion, and it is something that I was pleased to attend the Australian Forest Products Association dinner last night, uh, along with Minister Watt and Senator Raf Giacconi and a number of other members of this parliament, to talk about what is an extremely important industry, one that sustains thousands of jobs across the country and does so in a sustainable way. Because what we're talking about here is a resource that is, as the industry itself says, the ultimate renewable. Trees grow. You cut them down, you use them for the resources that we see displayed proudly in this chamber here, replant them as we are required to by law in this country, and they grow again. President, that's the wonderful thing about this forestry industry. And you know what's more? We do it to world's best standard. The management of our forests, be they plantation or native, hardwood or softwood, are managed to world's best standard. And, of course, the forests we harvest and manage here are certified, unlike 80 per cent of the forests from across the rest of the globe which are not certified. And I'll come back to those forests from other parts of the world where, frankly, standards of forest management are much lower, if indeed existent at all, than they are here in Australia. And so it brings me to what's happening in the state of Victoria which is a deeply disappointing decision. Now, we all knew back in 2019 that the Victorian Labor government had uh, made their plans, set them out clearly, to phase out native forest logging by the year 2030. It was a long period of time for that government to work with industry to phase out. I disagree with their decision, but at least there was time for them to work with industry to phase out logging uh, of native forests in that state. Now, the reason I disagreed with that, of course, is because it was not based on science. It was not based on fact. It was an emotive decision. And mayors of local councils in Victoria, uh, representatives of the industry, uh, workers from the contracting sector, uh, anyone who's been interested has been seeking this science that the decision was based upon. Yet it has not been forthcoming. No document has been able to be tabled by the government to point to and underpin the decision they've made to shut down the native forest industry and to displace the hundreds and thousands of workers whose incomes are dependent on this, as I said before, President, sustainable industry. And that is a crying shame. But what's worse is in their budget, the Victorian Labor government made a decision to press fast forward on this phasing out of native forest logging. We had seven more years to phase out this industry bad enough in itself, not based on science, but they've brought it forward seven months, to seven months, fast forward seven years. So by the end of this year, that industry, which is sustainable, based on science, world's best practice, good for the environment, will be gone. But you know what won't be gone, President? The demand for the product that that industry generates. Hardwood products 
of an appearance grade and strength grade to be used in applications plantation timber can't be. Now, Australians are still going to want, to want that product, and a huge proportion of what we use here we already import. And as I've said, President, uh, when that demand is still there and we're not producing it in Australia, we're bringing it in from countries that, quite frankly, don't give a damn about the environment. That those forests, those native forests across the rest of the world, you know, including the Congo Basin, where, sadly, trees are ripped out of the ground, deforestation does occur, are going to be where we're getting our timber from. In Victoria today, we're already importing timber into Victoria from Tasmania. The pie is not getting any bigger with our sustainable world-leading forests. It's getting smaller. We're dealing ourselves out of the game to make ourselves feel better. We don't have to look at clear-felled coops. We don't have to see that end of the industry. We just get the nice products. We don't care where they come from overseas. And in the process, we're sending jobs offshore. So bad environmental outcomes, because we're seeing deforestation occur. I'd also argue that there are some modern slavery implications to some of these decisions when it comes to the jurisdictions we're taking timber from. But we're also having an economic hit. Thousands of jobs in regional communities lost, never to return, all based on a motion to win over inner city votes in downtown Melbourne. And the Federal Labor Government needs to stand up and stop it. Thank you, Senator Dunningham. Senator Chisholm. Uh, thanks, President. And uh, I rise to speak uh, and oppose this motion put by Senator Dunningham. And you think Senator Dunningham would have uh, some things to worry about in his actual job rather than worrying about what's going on in the state of Victoria? Um, you think he'd have some national issues that um, he wants to address. But as is typical with Senator Dunningham, he's become very obsessed with state issues and he just can't quite move. See, the bigger picture is really focused on these really state things that Senator Dunningham seems to really specialise in. But I speak to this motion as a really strong supporter of the forestry industry. And to be honest, if I actually worked in the timber industry, I'd be the third generation of my family to work in the timber industry, in Tasmania, actually, uh, where both my grandfathers worked in the timber industry and my father um, did as well. Um, so I do have a, a good sense of how important this industry is for regional communities, um, not only in Victoria but across the country as well. And as I said, the Albanese government is a strong supporter of the forestry industry from the Prime Minister down. And we are delivering a comprehensive plan for the future of the industry. Through the regional forest agreement process, we work with states and territories to support Australia's forest industries to operate under high standards for environmental management and sustainable harvesting. Our support for sustainable forestry is well documented, making record investments in forestry that is environmentally, socially and commercially sustainable. We need timber products and we want the sustainable forest jobs that go with it. That's why we are investing over $300 million to grow plantations, modernise our timber manufacturing infrastructure and build the skills of our forestry workforce. Our forest product industries are vital to our regional communities. They directly employ about 51,000 people and tens of thousands of more jobs indirectly supported by a sector that contributes nearly $24 billion to the national economy each year. The benefits of a competitive, sustainable and renewable forestry industry in our regional communities should not be underestimated. It delivers positive economic and social outcomes. In addition to employment and income throughout the supply chain, it also underpins the social networks and fabric of many of our regional towns and communities. It's astounding to me that the LNP and in particular Senator, Senator Dunningham should be putting this motion given the timid and insipid approach to the forestry sector during their three terms of government. They failed to chart a path toward a sustainable future for the industry. They failed to intervene when the Victorian government previously scaled back native forestry. And they failed to put in appropriate measures to ramp up to production in its place. Even worse, they presided over a 10 per cent decline of plantation estate since 2014. In stark contrast, the Albanese government didn't waste a second in implementing strong policies for a sustainable future in forestry. At the last election, we took a suite of policies to the people of Australia to increase production and support new jobs in the sector. And unlike the previous government, that was all announcement and no delivery, we are already seeing these policies put into action. Whether that is the $100 million for Australia-wide institute to deliver forestry research and development, 
or the $8.6 million to extend the life of the 11 regional forestry hubs until 2027, or the $10 million to forestry workforce training needs. Today, our government also, uh, are also announcing $73 million a grant program to establish new forestry plantations across Australia. Together, these measures will strengthen the forest industry's capacity to make greater use of the available timber resource and drive innovation and growth. The Victorian government's decision to end native forest logging is a decision for them. It's one that we understand they have taken with a specific operating context in mind, and we will work closely with communities and state governments to maximise the economic opportunity and job opportunities that flow from protecting forests. Um, I certainly know I can speak from my um, family's experience in that I understand how important uh, forest, forestry jobs are for families. Uh, I know uh, my grandfather and uh, the support that he was able to provide my mum, who was one of nine uh, growing up in regional Tasmania, and how important forestry was um, for them to survive as a family. Um, we want those jobs to be able to continue. We understand that regional communities um, have been built on the back of strong uh, jobs uh, within forestry, uh, and the Albanese Labor government uh, is absolutely committed to doing our part to ensure that there is a sustainable forestry industry well into the future. Thank you, Senator Chisholm. Senator Wright. The time for native forest logging is over. Native forest log logging has to come to an end. Just like whaling finally came to an end, middle of last century, the time for native forest logging to come to an end is now, yeah, yeah. way before now. The Victorian government, the WA government are just catching up. Native forest logging is destructive, it is uneconomic and it is increasingly being shown to be illegal. It is destructive. The number of animal and plant species that have been hurtled towards extinction, critically endangered leadbeater's possums, critically endangered swift parrots. We have got greater gliders shifting from being common to endangered because of the combination of logging and fires and logging that causes fires. It is destructive. It is uneconomic. Native forest logging has cost the taxpayers over $100 million over the last 10 years. Just think of that, $100 million to prop up a dying industry. In Victoria alone, um, we have had the cost about $10 million, I think, $100 the, no, that's, the Victorian government-owned logging agency has lost close to $100 million over the last 10 years. In 2021, it was reported that the New South Wales government-owned Forestry Corporation suffered a $20 million loss. Tasmania delivered a whopping $1.3 billion loss. Yeah. The future for the timber industry is in plantations. Yeah. It is in farm forestry. Yeah. It is in urban forestry. Yeah. It is in getting greater use of the wood that is currently being shipped offshore as whole logs and being chipped. There is so much potential here. There are jobs just waiting if we recognise that native forest logging needs to come to an end. If governments across the country did that, then there'd be a whole bright new future. Thank you, Senator in, Rice. In Your time the industry. Has Senator Colbeck. Uh, thank you, uh, President. Um, and it's a great pleasure to rise to this urgency motion moved by uh, Senator Dunham, and I can only concur with the comments listed in his motion. Um, I think it demonstrates how committed the government is to forestry, and I don't doubt um, a good senator's uh, desire to see forestry uh, in Tasmania continue, given his family history, and I'll, uh, I'll acknowledge that. But the fact that not one Labor senator from Victoria is prepared to, to come and stand here in this chamber and defend the Labor government in Victoria's actions speaks volumes for this motion. Not one single Labor member prepared to step foot into the chamber to defend what the Victorian Labor government is doing. I think that demonstrates, as I said, uh, exactly what's going on. And, uh, President, um, if you actually look, as Senator Dunham said in his contribution, at the science of forestry, uh, about the realities of forestry, you'll clearly understand uh, that this sector plays an important role in our broader communities, and, and no lesser organisation, uh, President, than the FAO made this statement in their State of the Forest report. 
So this is the Food and Agriculture Organisation of the United Nations for Hansard and those listening. It must be clear that including forests at the core of a strategy for a sustainable future is not an option. It is mandatory. And they go on to say that the best way of saving a forest is to manage it sustainably, sustainably and to benefit from its products and ecosystem services if the principles of sustainable forest management are applied and forest products and ecosystem services play an increasing role, the global economy will become greener. The global economy will become greener. It's interesting, President, that um, we just heard that the future is in plantations. We hear this quite a lot from the Greens. Mind you, you've got to grow those plantations somewhere uh, and every time someone looks to grow a plantation on a new piece of ground, the Greens are there to uh, oppose it or to campaign against it. But the reality is that you won't get the high quality timbers that go into making magnificent furniture like we enjoy in this chamber here from a plantation forestry. Uh, as a carpenter, I know that the best quality timbers are slow grown. They're given time on a sustainable forest rotation. That's where you'll get these timbers. Uh, and not only that, a native forest-based industry, acknowledging that the plantation sector is important, a native forest-based um, system of growing timber is actually better for carbon storage, it's better for biodiversity, it's better for water quality, and it uses no chemicals. So under almost every environmental value that you could consider, native, native forestry, nat well, actually, it's better for biodiversity. And of course, the Order. And, and, Order. And, and for the forest, deni forest science deniers that sit at the bottom of the garden, or should I say at the bottom of the chamber, should I say at the bottom of the chamber, the forest science deniers who won't prepare to listen to the FAO of the UN or the IPCC when they recommend sustainable forestry. They talk to us about the IPCC when it comes to climate change, but they don't recognise that Senator native Kim. forestry is better for carbon storage than, than plantation forestry, which they claim to promote. So the forest science denies in the chamber really don't want to listen to reality. And of course, they are the ones pushing the Victorians to this circumstance. Now, we know the fires in Victoria have had an impact on the available timbers. It means an adjustment to the sector to make sure that the forest harvest can be, continue to be sustainable. Uh, and, and I have to say, I'm sick of the lies. I'm sick of the lies that are made up by anti-forestry groups that, are continued, that they continue to peddle in relation to this sector, because it does, as Senator Chisholm say, make a, a valuable contribution to our communities. It does make a valuable contribution to important sectors of our economy. It does provide us with the magnificent timbers that we see and, and sit here in the chamber. And it's a pity that nobody from the Labor Party from Victoria would come into the chamber to defend this motion. Thank you, Senator Colbeck. Senator Tyrrell. Thank you, President. You know, I've seen these photos of forest totally cleared, logs everywhere looking more like the surface of the moon than the centre of a native forest. And if you're making policy based on what gets clicks on Facebook, you'd support banning native timber harvesting too. And it's a good thing we don't. You can't measure good policy based on how many likes it gets. And that's why this idea of banning native timber forestry makes no sense to me. Yeah. You can't just jump into a blanket ban like this. If you want to improve forestry standards, that's a conversation worth having. But you've got to have that conversation with the industry, not just with your social media feed. Banning native timber harvesting is basically the same thing as saying that this industry cannot be regulated. You're saying there is no way to balance the environmental impacts with the economic benefits. And that's just not true. Of course, native forestry needs to be regulated properly. Nobody would tell you otherwise. You can't have cowboys cutting down whatever they want, wherever they want. But there's a better way to do this which keeps those jobs in regional Tasmania and keeps that money in people's pockets. There's a role for native forestry, and it's got to be recognised. It's a sustainable, renewable industry when it's regulated well. 
The cowboys of years gone by, they're out. They're gone. The native forestry sector these days is nothing like what it used to be, but its reputation is still based on what it used to be 30 years ago. That's when we see real damage, real deforestation. Today's industry is about making sure the footprint of forestry is sustainable and renewable. And that means we're getting the jobs, we're getting those salaries, we're getting the products the forestry sector is making. That might not mean much in Canberra or Melbourne, but it's a big deal in regional Tasmania. We don't get much of a look in up here, and that's how you end up with dumb bans like this one. Thank you, Senator Tyrrell. Senator McKim. Uh, well, thank you, President. Native forest logging is a violent assault on nature from a mendicant industry that cannot stand on its own two feet. It indiscriminately slaughters countless native animals. It poisons our rivers and waterways. It destroys ecosystems. It pollutes the air. It despoils landscapes. And it cooks the planet. The sooner it ends, the better. Just end it now and help people through the transition. If folks in here who like to cosplay as if they support regional communities were serious about regional jobs, invest in things like rewilding and looking after the place. Turn people who currently trash our forests into people who look after our forests, embed carbon into our forests and into our soils and look after the place rather than trash it. That's how you should help regional people move into Thank the future. You, Stop McKim. being such uh, hypocrites. Senator Roberts. Thank you. As a servant to the many different people who make up our one Queensland community, I speak in favour of Senator Dunningham's motion. The timber industry is an essential industry to maintain Australia's way of life. How can Labor Premier Andrews eliminate native timber production while at the same time Labor Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is promising to build 30,000 new homes which require timber? As a famous robot once said, that does not compute. Native timber forestry does not harm the environment. Sensible native timber logging has been going on in Australia for 150 years. The forests are still here. The fauna and flora are still here. Until these Labor and Greens ideologues declared war on a sustainable timber harvesting, the jobs in the timber industry were still here. The communities that rely on these jobs were still here. Not anymore. Dan Andrews has done them in. No jobs in forestry in Mr Dan Andrews' socialist state of Victoria. Thank you. The truth is native tidal logging disturbs a few percent of the total forest area every year. Logging reduces the forest fuel loads to protect us from bushfires. We also saw how badly some areas of forest burned in the deliberately lit bushfires a few years ago. Some areas have still not recovered, thanks to Greens and Teal policies. Clearly, not areas that were logged and the fuel loads removed. One Nation stands as a strong supporter of the logging industry and a strong supporter of humanity. Timber is essential. Uh, thank you, Senator Roberts. Senator Bayet. No. I rise in support of Senator Dunningham's urgency motion. Of course I do. I am appalled appalled by the accelerated destruction of the native timber industry in my home state of Victoria. The industry has been a vital part of Victoria's regional economy for 170 years, more than 170 years. But instead of being given until 2030 to transition, they've been blindsided with destruction within six months. Six months. The Andrews Labor government he has taken an axe to many hard-working Gippsland communities such as Orbost and Hayfield. Now, our native timber industry is the lifeblood of many of our regional towns, and its closure on January 1st is expected to cut 4,500 jobs. 4,500 jobs. Incredible. Now, children, children are in tears because their parents, their parents might not have a job next year. They don't know how they're going to put food on the table. They don't know where they're going to go, how they're going to feed their kids. It's wrong. Mortgages are going to default. Schools are going to close. Local footy clubs, gone. Now, this plan is a plan to destroy country towns, and it is heartless. 
and more importantly, it is unscientific. Now, Premier Dan Andrews, he recently said that he wasn't here to be popular. That's what he said. My God, is he correct? I can't stand the man. Now, he may be popular with Greens leader Mr Adam Bant and the Chinese Communist Party. He's popular with them. But I guarantee you he'll never stand face to face with those regional Victorians whose lives he is destroying. Now, the industry regulator it works hard to ensure the long-term health and productivity of our beautiful native forests. Far from damaging ecosystems, sustainable logging prevents devastating superfires because the industry has a vested interest in protecting the sustainability of native forests. That's why, that's why it, logs, it logs selectively and regenerates native species, creating healthy, resilient forests which provide a unique home for flora and fauna. Now, before the arrival of settlers, indigenous Australians used to reduce the risk of fire, of intense fires, by backburning. That's what they did. Now, the native timber, in, the native timber industry they achieved the same result by maintaining fire breaks, access roads, reducing fuel loads and conducting prescribed burning. Now, disgracefully, the Andrews government is not interested in these benefits, only in, co in courting inner city Greens votes. That's all he's interested in, and it's not right. Labor needs to stand up Thank for our forests. Thank you, Senator. Your time has expired. Senator Brockman. Thank you, Madam Acting Deputy President. Well, I too rise to speak on this urgency motion, and I, I can feel for those forestry workers, those communities in Victoria who have had their lives thrown into turmoil by this decision because it's just happened in WA. It's just happened in WA. Just a few months before the decision to end native uh, logging in Western, native, native timber harvesting in Western Australia, the minister released a report, gave a speech, talked about Senator McKim, talked about the sustainability talked about the well-managed West Australian native timber harvesting. This was the Labor Minister. Just gave a speech talking about how well-managed the native timber harvesting was, how it was sustainable and how it was there for the long term. Just a few months later, chopped it off at the neck. Ended it overnight. Now, I come from one of those communities. I was born in Manjimup, raised on a family farm in Pemberton. My dad's best mate was a timber industry worker, worked for the, the government, then Department of Forestry. Uh, we would had lots of friends in that community. And one of the things that happened in that community, almost overnight, when my dad ran for parliament in the 60s, he lost because it was a safe labour seat, safe labour seat on the back of a unionised timber workforce. When Labor betrayed them, when Labor betrayed those workers, as Labor always does in the bush, as Labor betrays the, betrayed those workers, it flipped, became a safe Liberal seat pretty much overnight. And that is the outcome that we see here. We see a betrayal of these communities to the point where long-held beliefs uh, have to be thrown out the window because those communities are undermined, betrayed by their political leaders when they do things like this. The very, very small harvest that was taken from Western Australia native, native forests sustained a, a small industry at the end. I'm happy to acknowledge that. It, it wasn't a, a massive industry anymore. It had been cut down over the years and made into a relatively small industry. But to those few towns that relied on that industry, it was a key economic driver. To those small towns in the southwest of Western Australia, harvesting basically two timbers, carry and red gum, it was a key component of the fabric and the history uh, and, and the economic uh, uh, wealth of those communities. So to have that chopped out from under you with no warning, no transition time. Uh, in fact, when just a few months before the Labor minister was saying that the industry was sustainable, had a long future, 
I mean, how can you do that to a community? How in all conscience can you do that to a local community? I mean, it's just a disgrace. But unfortunately, Labor governments have form in the bush. Labor governments have form in the bush, whether it be in the, in the native uh, timber harvesting uh, in my home state of WA and now in, in Victoria, or you see exactly the same process occurring in my home state of WA over the uh, sheep industry. You know, a, a decision taken with no evidence, no evidence, no scientific review, no examination of what the industry had actually done to improve standards over the years. And as Senator Tyrrell so rightly said, we should look at things like standards. We should see how industries are being managed. We should look at the way that industries are operating now, not as they used to operate 30 years ago when the Greens were formulating their positions on this. We should look at how the industries are operating now, make decisions based on the best science. Are these industries sustainable? Are their practices at world's best standards? Are we delivering sustainable jobs into the future? And the answer on all those marks for both the, the, the timber har native timber harvesting and in, in my uh, home state also the, the live export industry for sheep is yes, they are sustainable. And the trouble is federal labour and state labour just don't care about the bush. I'd even go work more harder than that. They don't. They hate the bush. They don't care. Thank you, and they... Senator. Your time has expired. The question is that the motion moved by Senator Dunningham be agreed to. Those of that opinion say aye. All those against say no. The ayes have it. Division required. Division required. Uh, Thank you, Senator Okay. Put there. It's been asked to be put again. Um, all of those of that opinion say aye. All those against say no. There's one voice. Um, thank you. Oh, did you? Sorry. I'm losing my voice and my hearing. Uh, a division's called. Ring the bells for four minutes.
lock the doors. So the question is that the motion is moved by Senator Dunningham on the urgency motion be agreed to. The ayes shall move to the right of the chair, the noes to the left. I appoint Senator Askew as teller for the ayes and Senator Urquhart as teller for the noes. Senator Watt. Order, there being 30 ayes and 32 noes, the matter is resolved in the negative. Senator.